Hearing Voices Movement, Wikipedia Audio The Hearing Voices Movement is the name used by organizations and individuals advocating the Hearing Voices approach, an alternative way of understanding the experience of those people who hear voices. In the medical professional literature, voices are most often referred to as auditory hallucinations or verbal hallucinations. The movement uses the term voices, which it feels is a more accurate and user-friendly term. The movement was instigated by Marius Rahm, Sandra Escher, and Patsy Hage in 1987. It challenges the notion that to hear voices is necessarily a characteristic of mental illness. Instead it regards hearing voices as a meaningful and understandable, although unusual, human variation. It therefore rejects the stigma and pathologization of hearing voices and advocates human rights, social justice and support for people who hear voices that is empowering and recovery focused. The movement thus challenges the medical model of mental illness, specifically the validity of the schizophrenia construct. The International Hearing Voices Movement is a prominent mental health service user-slash-survivor movement that promotes the needs and perspectives of experts by experience in the phenomenon of hearing voices. The main tenet of the Hearing Voices Movement is the notion that hearing voices is a meaningful human experience. History and Tenets the Hearing Voices movement regards itself and is regarded by others as being a post-psychiatric organization. It positions itself outside of the mental health world in recognition that voices are an aspect of human difference, rather than a mental health problem. One of the main issues of concern for the Hearing Voices movement is empowerment and human rights as outlined in its Melbourne Hearing Voices Declaration 2013 and Thessaloniki Declaration 2014. The Hearing Voices movement also seeks holistic health solutions to problematic and overwhelming voices that cause mental distress. Based on their research, the movement espouses that many people successfully live with their voices. In themselves voices are not seen as the problem. Rather it is the relationship the person has with their voices that is regarded as the main issue. Research indicates that mindfulness-based interventions can be beneficial for people distressed by hearing voices. Hearing voices is not in itself a sign of mental illness. Hearing voices is part of the diversity of being a human, it is a faculty that is common and significant, hearing voices is experienced by many people who do not have symptoms that would lead to diagnosis of mental illness, hearing voices is often related to problems in life history, if hearing voices causes distress, the person who hears the voices can learn strategies to cope with the experience. Coping is often achieved by confronting the past problems that lie behind the experience. The Hearing Voices movement has developed interventions for mental health practitioners to support people who hear voices and are overwhelmed by the experience. The position of the Hearing Voices movement can be summarized as follows. The work of Rahm, Escher, and other researchers provides a theoretical framework for the movement. They find that Rahm, colleagues, and other researchers find that people who hear voices can be helped using methods such as voice dialoguing cognitive behavior therapy and self-help methods. Rahm theorizes a three-phase model of recovery. Startling initial confusion, emotional chaos, fear, helplessness, and psychological turmoil, organization the need to find meaning, arrive at some understanding and acceptance. The development of ways of coping and accommodating voices in everyday living. This task may take months or years and is marked by the attempt to enter into active negotiation with the voice stabilization the establishment of equilibrium, and accommodation, with the voice, 
and the consequent re-empowerment of the person. The Hearing Voices movement disavows the medical model of disability and disapproves of the practices of mental health services through much of the Western world, such as treatment solely with medication. For example, some service users have reported negative experiences of mental health services because they are discouraged from talking about their voices as these are seen solely as symptoms of psychiatric illness. Slade and Bentel conclude that the failure to attend to hallucinatory experiences and slash or have the opportunity for dialogue about them is likely to have the effect of helping to maintain them. In Voices of Reason, Voices of Insanity, Ludar and Thomas review nearly 3,000 years of voice hearing history. They argue that the Western world has moved the experience of hearing voices from a socially valued context to a pathologist and denigrated one. Foucault has argued that this process can generally arise when a minority perspective is at odds with dominant social norms and beliefs. Hearing Voices, Horizon Documentary, BBC UK description traditional clinical psychology postulates that people who hear voices are mad, but Dutch psychiatrist Professor Marius Rahm argues that the voices people hear relate to their own thoughts and that they can learn to live with them. Explores the arguments for focusing on what the voices say, rather than suppressing them with medication. Broadcast on BBC2 on 24-4-95 Angels and Demons directed by Sonia Pemberton, F2003, produced by ABC Commercial, In Enough Rope, Episode 162, 47 Mints Description Angels and Demons provides a rare insight into the experiences of those with mental illness. Himself deeply confronted, Andrew also finds the possibility of a better life for people often dismissed as beyond hope, the Doctor Who Hears Voices, Channel 4, UK description based on a true story. Ruth is a junior doctor hearing voices which tell her to kill herself. She is treated by controversial psychologist Dr. Rufus May. Rufus May is a maverick psychologist. He believes there is no such thing as schizophrenia, that medication can destroy lives and that there's nothing wrong with hearing voices. Rufus is an authority on the subject. He was diagnosed with acute schizophrenia aged 18, the Voices in My Head TED2013, filmed February 2013 description despite what traditional medicine may opine. Eleanor Longdon isn't crazy and neither are many other people who hear voices in their heads. In fact, the psychic phenomenon is a creative and ingenious survival strategy that should be seen not as an abstract symptom of illness to be endured, but as complex, significant and meaningful experience to be explored, the British psychology researcher says. Longdon spent many years in the psychiatric system before earning a BSc and an MSc in psychology, the highest classifications ever granted by the University of Leeds, England. Today she is studying for her PhD and lectures and writes about recovery-oriented approaches to psychosis, dissociation and complex trauma. Viewed over 3 million times on TED Talks and a further 1 million times on YouTube. Position The Hearing Voices movement was established in 1987 by Rom and Escher, both from the Netherlands, with the formation of Stichting Weir Clank, a peer-led support organization for people who hear voices. In 1988, the Hearing Voices Network was established in England with the active support of ROM. Since then, networks have been established in 35 countries. Intervoice is the organization that provides coordination and support to the Hearing Voices movement. 
it is supported by people who hear voices, relatives, friends and mental health professionals including therapists, social workers, nurses, psychiatrists and psychologists. Intervoice was formed in 1997, at a meeting of voice hearers, family members and mental health workers was held in Maastricht, Netherlands to consider how to organize internationally further research and work about the subject of voice hearing. The meeting decided to create a formal organizational structure to provide administrative and coordinating support to the wide variety of initiatives in the different involved countries. The organization is structured as a network and was incorporated in 2007 as a non-profit company and charity under UK law. It operates under the name of International Hearing Voices Projects Ltd. The president is Marius Rahm and the governing body is made up of people who hear voices and mental health practitioners. Hearing voices groups are based on an ethos of self-help, mutual respect and empathy. They provide a safe space for people to share their experiences and to support one another. They are peer support groups, involving social support and belonging not necessarily therapy or treatment. Groups offer an opportunity for people to accept and live with their experiences in a way that helps them regain some power over their lives. There are hundreds of hearing voices groups and networks across the world. In 2014 there were more than 180 groups in the UK. These include groups for young people, people in prison, women, and people from black and minority ethnic communities. Intervoice hosts the annual World Hearing Voices Congress. In 2015 the 7th Congress was held in Madrid, Spain, the 2016 Congress will be held in Paris, France. Previous conferences have been held in Maastricht, Netherlands, Nottingham, England, Savona, Italy, Cardiff, Wales, Melbourne, Australia, Thessaloniki, Greece, Madrid, Spain. This is held on September 14 and celebrates hearing voices as part of the diversity of human experience, it seeks to increase awareness of the fact that you can hear voices and be healthy. It also challenges the negative attitudes towards people who hear voices and the assumption that hearing voices, in itself, is a sign of mental illness. Theoretical Overview Alternative to Medical Model of Disability Intervoice maintains several forums on Twitter, Facebook and other social media platforms. Using ideas that don't support science-based ways of understanding illness, undermines people's trust in medical help that might be crucial to their well-being, encourages people to focus on their voices when they may be having a hard time differentiating between what's real and what's not real, doesn't recognize the very different needs of people with severe mental illnesses, by failing to differentiate between the needs of people who actually have psychotic disorders and those who don't, HVM poses serious risks, poses real danger for the substantial number of people who lack insight into their psychotic disorder, people struggling with psychotic symptoms shouldn't be advised to emphasize the meaning of auditory hallucinations. Organization Activities Hearing Voices Groups World Hearing Voices Congress Annual World Hearing Voices Day Intervoice has an international research committee, that commissions research, encourages and supports exchanges and visits between member countries, the translation and publication of books and other literature on the subject of hearing voices and other related extraordinary experiences. Bavan, Vanessa, Reed, John, Cartwright, Claire. The prevalence of voice hearers in the general population, 
a literature review. Journal of Mental Health. Taylor and Francis. 20, 281 292. doi 10.3109 0963823.2011.562262. PMID 2157-4793, Pearson, David, Smalley, Michelle, Ainsworth, Christopher, Cook, Maria, Boyle, Jacqueline, Fleury, Sarah. Auditory Hallucinations in Adolescent and Adult Students, Implications for Continuums and Adult Pathology Following Child Abuse. Journal of Nervous and Mental Disease. Lippincott Williams and Wilkins. 196, 634 638. doi 10.1097/nmd.0b013e3181813 2b6. PMID 189746766. Posey, Thomas B. Losh. Mary E. Auditory Hallucinations of Hearing Voices in 375 Normal Subjects Imagination, Cognition, and Personality Sage 3. 99113 doi 10.2190-74 v5hnxnjey5dg7w Tien, Alan Y. Distributions of Hallucinations in the Population Social Psychiatry and Psychiatric Epidemiology Springer 26, 287 292 doi 10.1007-BF0078922-1 PMID 179-2560 Awareness of the hearing voices approach in the public arena has grown over the last 29-30 years through media coverage in Europe, US, Australia etc. Andrew, Elizabeth Marie, Gray, Nicola S., Snowden, Robert. The Relationship Between Trauma and Beliefs About Hearing Voices, A Study of Psychiatric and Non-Psychiatric Voice Hearers. Psychological Medicine Cambridge Journals 38, 1409 1417 doi 10.1017-S00332917000253x PMID 1817-7529 PDF, Honig, Adrian, Rom Marius A. J., Ensink, Bernadine J., Escher, Sandra D., Pennings, Monique H. A., DeVries, Martin W. Auditory Hallucinations, A Comparison Between Patients and Non-Patients Journal of Nervous and Mental Disease Lippincott Williams and Wilkins 186 646651 doi 10.1097/0000050530199810000009 PMID 9788642 Andrew Course Tens Dirk Auditory Hallucinations Psychotic Symptom or Dissociative Experience Journal of Psychological Trauma Taylor and Francis 6, 3563 doi 10.1300-J513V06N0204 10 Reed, John, Perry, Bruce D., Moskowitz, Andrew, Connolly January. The Contribution of Early Traumatic Events to Schizophrenia in Some Patients, a Traumagenic Neurodevelopmental Model. Psychiatry, 
interpersonal and biological processes. Taylor and Francis. 64. 319.345. doi. 10.1521 slash psyc.64.4.319.1860.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
a model for formulating the relationship between voices and life history. Psychosis, Psychological, Social and Integrative Approaches Taylor and Francis 4. 224-234 DOI 10.1080-1752249.2011.596566, ROM, Marius A.J., Morris, Mervyn. The Recovery Process with Hearing Voices, Accepting as well as Exploring Their Emotional Background Through a Supported Process. Psychosis, Psychological, Social and Integrative Approaches special issue voices in a positive light taylor and francis 5 259269 doi 10.1080/1752243.9.2013.830641 stainsby matt sapicnik manuela bledon ken mason Oliver J. Are attitudes and beliefs about symptoms more important than symptom severity in recovery from psychosis? Psychosis, Psychological, Social and Integrative Approaches Taylor and Francis 2. 4149 DOI 10.1080-1752243090314438. Website and social media platforms. The Hearing Voices movement has been criticized for its stance on medication and schizophrenia and for promoting non-medical and non-evidence-based approaches to severe mental illnesses in articles by Susan Inman from the Huffington Post such as People Who Hear Voices Need Science-Based Advice in 2013, and What You're Not Hearing About the Hearing Voices Movement in 2015. Specific criticisms of the hearing voices approach include Voice hearing prevalence Voice hearing in life events Working with voices Hearing Voices Groups Research Committee Dylan, Jackie, Hornstein, Gail A. Hearing Voices Peer Support Groups, a powerful alternative for people in distress. Psychosis, Psychological, Social and Integrative Approaches, Special Issue, Voices in a Positive Light. Taylor and Francis 5.286.295. DOI 10.1080/1752243.9.2013.843020. Dylan, Jackie, Longden, Eleanor. Hearing Voices Groups: Creating Safe Spaces to Share Taboo Experiences. In Rom, Marius A. J. Escher, Sandra D. Psychosis as a Personal Crisis, an Experience-Based Approach, Hove, East Sussex, New York, New York, Routledge for the International Society for the Psychological Treatments of the Schizophrenias and Other Picoses, pages 129-139, ISBN 9780415673303, Eleanor, Self-Help Approaches to Hearing Voices, in Larry, Frank, Aleman, Andre, Hallucinations, A Guide to Treatment and Management, Oxford, UK, Oxford University Press, ISBN 9780199548590 Impact Informing Public Debate Criticism of the Hearing Voices Movement Publications Press Articles Links